If you're anything like me and find the side split a literal pain in your buttocks and you're struggling to get deeper, then this video is for you. During my time in Bali, I had the pleasure of getting to know Matthew Smith, a flexibility expert with whom I bonded through our mutual sense of geekiness and hours of discussions and intriguing conversations. After seeing him push down our mutual friend Theo in the side split, in just one session, I knew I had to invite him to my channel to share his knowledge with you guys. Let's just jump straight into it. The side split is a really technical position in that if we go straight down and lift our legs directly to the side, what likely happens is the hip is going to jam for most people. So we need to change the position in which we go into in order to optimize our alignment in order to be able to get into the side split. There's two ways of doing this. The first one is to roll our hips forward and the second one is we externally rotate our feet out. But we're going to show the first one first. So I'm going to get into a position where my feet and hands are roughly in the same line and from here I'm going to slide down whilst rolling my hips really, really far forward. I don't want to have my hips on posterior tilt, where if I slide straight down, I'm gonna jam about here. This is where my hips begin to jam. We then have to roll our hip forwards in order to create the space to be able to go deeper into our side split. Yeah, for me, it's like already here, it jams. I just feel the pinching straight inside my hips. Go here, I can slide down much more comfortably. The next part of this equation is we need the hips to sit ever so slightly back behind the line of the ankles. So like, like this. this. Like this. It's almost like you're sitting on a low stool or low chair behind you. Yeah. It's kind of going back on a slight diagonal. So already just by changing the hip position, you've got much deeper. Exactly. Now to test to see whether or not we can get into this position, we're going to go through a few different assessments to look at what is holding the side split back. What Matt means by assessment is literally a test to see where your side split is held back. By learning where our individual limits lie, we can be much more specific in how we approach the side split for optimized results. Testing our current level of positions like the pancake, Taylor's pose, or active mobility in the side split, or our side split strength, if you want, can reveal that there are better places to put our effort at our current level. And the first of these tests is the pancake position, because the pancake is basically, we've got our legs apart, and we're rolling the hips forward to get into a pancake. And so that level of our ability to roll the hips forward is going to correlate with our ability to not jam our bows. Okay. Here I'm dropping my head and reaching my hands really far forwards and just seeing how far we can go. If the forehead can touch, we then go nose, chin, chest, abdomen. So head drops down and you're reaching far forwards. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people aren't even able to sort of get over here. So they feel like they're not getting any weight over and just like falling backwards. It's really common and it can feel almost impossible to roll the hip forward. In fact, when I first started, I was literally out here struggling to even understand how people got their head to tip forward. And we can think of this in terms of the leverages. If you're up here and you're trying to lean forwards, you really don't have much of a leverage on your body weight to actually pull you deeper. Basically, gravity can't really help. It can only pull you down through your own body because if I take this same position and I flip it so now I'm standing, if I'm still really tight, I now have a much greater lever arm that gravity can pull from to help me get deeper. It's basically just doing a pancake or a side split yeah. and hanging forwards. Exactly. And so we're going to set this up on a couple of boxes so that we can get deeper. And then you can turn your feet out if you want or have them facing forward, whatever you find comfortable. Then from here, you're going to drop your head and hang down. So already I'm using these blocks as a marker for you to reach for. If that's too easy, we can go down like this and you're going to contract for five seconds, really pulling yourself deeper, trying to touch that object and then relax in the position. So now you're just going to hang without contracting and now reach. In fact, you might be able to go for the floor now. Exactly. Three, two, one. And now just chill. Cool. You can come out. Oh, I love it. Intense. Yeah. But nice. So here we have gravity helping pull you deeper. We have the added weight also helping. And we have the own force of your hip flexors pulling you deeper. Yeah. So we've aligned everything to take you from this position where struggling to go into the pancake into something that's completely optimized for how deep can we get. Nice. 
So if you're able to lean further forwards in the pancake when you take that assessment, in this case, we're gonna go hips elevated. So now gravity is gonna be helping us relatively less. Somewhere around eight to 10 kilos is normally pretty good. And notice we're allowing the head to drop and the spine to round a little bit. This is because when you actually use the pancake position in most sports, you're gonna be using a rounded back position. So think press handstands, pole dancing, things like this. You have that rounded back. And second, the head needs the body. And so if you're trying to get that hip to roll, if you just isolate and are super rigid with your spine, it's normally quite hard to kind of feel the hip motion. But in this case, because you're letting the head and spine drop, it kind of pulls that hip with it. And that's exactly what we want, trying to teach that hip to roll forwards. So we can just remove that bar. And then we just do the exact same thing, yeah? The exact same thing. Amazing. And so from here, we can go through the touch points. So once you reach the floor of your forehead, we can then try and aim and go to the floor of our nose. Amazing. And then eventually it would be chin, then chest, and then abdomen to the floor. If you can't pancake enough to get your head very close or touching the floor, it's probably gonna limit your middle splits position, which is then gonna create that bone jam and you're not gonna be able to get where you want to be. Exactly. Makes sense. So once we've tested the pancake and now you know which drill you need to go for, if you can get pretty much flat, you're fine for the sake of the middle split. But now we're gonna look at your adductors and isolating these through Taylor's pose. So Taylor's pose. Taylor's pose. <laughs> the goal of this is to look at your adductors being stretched. So we're trying to isolate these out. Now, one of the adductors called gracilis crosses your knee. And so by bending the knees, we're not involving that. Also, the leverage is much easier than when we're in a side split position. Basically, what I'm saying is this is an easy side split. We just want to use the box or the wall to support you. And then you're going to pull yourself apart and see how wide can you get your knees. And the goal for a side split is to be able to get it so that your calves completely touch the floor. And I definitely can't do that. <laughs> so this is exactly what we're testing for. In this case, you need to work on isolating your adductors out in this bent knee position. Okay. So what we just did is an assessment position where we're testing to see where your range is at. Now we're going to switch from an assessment to a training position where we're actually going to load this up and use weight to help you get deeper. Okay. The weight we're going to pick is enough that it's going to help you get deeper, but not so heavy that you tense up and can't get further. In the case of the Taylor's pose, it's pretty strong, this position. And so you can go reasonably heavy. So this would be the lighter end of 10 kilos. And normally you might go heavier than this. So you're going to hold the bottom for three seconds using the weight to help you get deeper. And then you're going to lift up and drop back down. Exactly. Nice. And I'm guessing when I'm lifting up, I'm not lifting up with my hands, but with the adductors. Exactly. The adductors, so yeah. The muscles on the inside of your leg, you want them to be doing the work and they should be the ones feeling the stretch. Nice. So the goal here is to get it so that the calves completely touch the ground. If you're able to do that, you can then elevate your hips and feet so your knees can go below. But actually for most people getting the side split, once you get calves down, that's normally enough and you can move on to other exercises. Okay. <clears throat> So we've tested a couple of different pieces in order to get into the middle split, the hip tilt, and now isolating your adductors out. What we're gonna look at now is compare your strength versus your total range of motion. And how you can think about it is, imagine this is your total range, and then this is the strength you have to go into that range. All we wanna do is work out how big of a gap you have between these two. Because if your range is here and your strength is really, really good and almost matching it or matching it, then we now know we want to push your total range and it's going to be more of a passive style of stretching. But if the gap is different, if this is your total range, but your strength only gets to here and there's a big gap between the two, we're going to work on strengthening it so you get stronger in that position. And we can test this gap by comparing your hands assisted, so passive side split position, to your hands free, so more of an isometric, a bit more active position, to then lifting your leg up as high as you can. And so this is going to be a pure active lifting against gravity position. And the difference between those is going to tell us where on that passive to active spectrum, how big of that gap we want to work with. So basically, if your active is shitty, but your passive is good, you need to work more on your active. Exactly. Or if your active is as good as your passive, you need to increase your passive 
flexibility. Yes, and so now you can skew your training based on where you need to work. Makes sense. So in the case of someone who needs to work on more of strengthening that range, we can do something called a straddle up. In a straddle up, we're gonna be pulling ourselves into position and using our strength to get there, and then we're gonna hold it isometrically at the top. And so this becomes a strengthening style of drill. If you need to work on that passive flexibility, so your strength matched your passive range, then we need to work on more passive stretching. And so we can use blocks and objects to support our calves, and we can use our hands to take the body weight away, so we can now relax more into the side split. And so people who are typically on the stronger, tighter end tend to benefit from this style of training, which is often counterintuitive because they often like the more active form. And so moving more towards this passive element isn't often as intuitive, but it's super beneficial. Yeah. And that also makes sense for me. For my assessment, my active and my passive was more or less the same. Um, like me. Probably also because I don't really like working passive. Uh, yeah, so it's probably something I need to work more on. And I mean, we also tested my girlfriend Suniva's difference. And uh, for her, it was a bit different because her passive was much better than her active, yep. which basically means that she should work more on her strength. Exactly. And in fact, if we compare side by side, she was deeper than you in the side split. But when it came to the active holds, you were deeper. So your strength exceeded hers, but her total range exceeded yours. And so we now know that you guys need to train on different ends of that passive to active spectrum. Yeah, so we can't be doing the same exercises then. <laughs> yeah, different. <laughs> the tests we looked at are the most important pieces, that pancake, Taylor's pose, and comparing passive to active. That gives you the big overall picture of what to do for your middle split, but there are more detailed cases. So we can also assess things like the horse stance, and external rotation, which is something that actually flagged up in your assessment. So in Sandra's case, he's gonna work more on external rotation training for his side split. And uh, if you know that that's something you struggle with as well, that it's worth mentioning at least that uh, there is a correlation between external rotation in your hip and the side split. Exactly. So this is the power of going through an assessment. An assessment allows you to target your training to what you need as an individual. So out of this group that we just did these assessments, everyone has a slightly different program that they're gonna train with, which again means you can't train together, but it means that your training is more targeted specifically for you, so the progress should be better. Yeah. And what it means is if you can now track it and you can see, right, this is what I'm targeting, and we can measure, and then in a few weeks time, we can see have I improved, yes or no. And if you have, then great, keep going. If you haven't, then again, we're gonna look at that assessment and think how, what am I gonna tweak next to make sure that I keep progressing? Sounds like a very good strategy. There's no such thing as one size fits all when it comes to mobility as well as strength training. Exactly. So thank you so much, Matthew, for uh, teaching us how we can optimize our side split training. It's been a pleasure. And um, if you want more details on this side split stuff as well as other flexibility stuff, Matthew has a program to meet most needs, I would say. It's the Mobility and Flexibility Toolkit. And we call it a toolkit because it's not just a program. We give you the tools so we explain why you train the way you do. And so we go through these assessment processes, talk you through how to interpret your results and turn that into an individualized program like we've done here. Okay, so you can check that out. I'll link it in the description. And remember to also check out Matthew's uh, YouTube page. I'll um, pop that up here somewhere. <laughs> and uh, I guess uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, let us know in the comment section what profile you think that you are. All right. Amazing. See you guys later.